Today I'm going to be comparing an older Dell Optiplex, so an Optiplex 3010 in this case, to a newer model from roughly 10 years later, an Optiplex 5090. I wanted to see what has changed in about the last 10 years of Dell Optiplexes and business desktops in general, and just kind of see how this class of system has changed. So first a little bit about the Dell Optiplex. The Dell Optiplex is a line of business grade desktops. So they're typically designed for IT people to buy it, to be deployed in things like businesses, offices, schools, and government like situations. They're designed to be kind of used, sat there, and be used by users using things like Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, maybe like light CAD or design work, and some like accounting and tax software. I've seen these used in many different types of businesses and they're just kind of generally the basic desktop that everyone gets. Unless the Dell brands, along with other brands, generally have different tiers of these business desktops. So Dell kind of has three tiers currently, the 3000, the 5000, and the 7000 series. And as you move up those tiers, you get a few more premium features. Some of these examples include four memory slots instead of two on the lower end models. You get, you get remote management features such as Intel vPro for better remote management of systems. You get Intel onboard networking instead of Realtek. You get the higher end chipsets, so things like Q670 instead of H610, which has better I.O. on board. But overall, they're relatively similar systems. They all use the same processors, memory, storage, and all the other same internal bits. Now that I've gone over the basics of the Dell Optiplex line, let's take a look at the outside of the system first and see what has changed in the last 10 years. So taking a look at the overall form factor of this system, they're overall very similar. This is the Dell Optiplex SFF form factor, which is one of my favorites of their form factors because it's still a relatively small unit, but compared to the micro units, it gives you much better expansion and internal capabilities. For example, you get four memory slots compared to two on the micro units. You can get many more I.O. ports on the systems. You get a built-in power supply so you don't have to have an external power brick hanging out somewhere. You can put PCIe slots in, you can put a full size three and a half inch hard drive and an optical drive. Let's take a look at what actually differentiates this 10 year old model from a new one. First of all, taking a look at the front, the layout's changed a little bit. The USB ports and other front high O have moved all the way to the bottom of the system in a flat position. Instead of being on the middle on the older systems, the CD drive has moved to the middle and the vent has moved to the top. There's also a few more aesthetic changes with differences in the power button design and the vent design, but both of those work to find. You press the power button, the system turns on, and the vent's let enough airflow into the system to keep it cool. Moving to the top or side of the system, the way that the side panel works has changed a good amount. In these older systems, there was a nice large convenient handle you could pull on, pull up, and open the side of the system. The new ones have changed it so that that little handle is actually now on the back of the system. And this is also another way that Dell differentiates its low-end systems from its higher-end systems. On the Dell Optiplex 5090, there's a little mechanical little blue clip you can push to toolessly remove the side panel of the system. On the 3080 and the other 3000 series, those two little thumb screws that you have to take out to pop it off. I like the little clip because it's a little bit easier and faster to remove the side panel, but I think this older way of doing it with the big handle on the side is even faster and better, and it's also easier to align it like this on the old ones than it is the new ones where you have to kind of line up the sides of it a little bit more. Not a huge difference and you don't really use it that often, but it is nice and I like the older mechanism more, and I'm guessing it also does cost a little bit more. On the back of the system is the biggest visual difference. These older systems would paint the whole back of the system black, so it would all match. On the new system though, it just leaves it as bare metal. I'm guessing this is done as a cost saving matter, and realistically it doesn't matter for almost all uses because you don't look at the back of the system as you're using it normally. Other than the paint color change, the overall back of the system is fairly similar. The I.O. is in its spot. It isn't a easily replaceable I.O. like it would be on an ATX system. It all is just permanently cut into the system. Those two half height PCI Express slots and the power supply that takes the AC input. One cool new thing the newer systems have added is these little punch outs. And you can actually take those out and put in little add-in slots. Normally this is done in the factory so you can get things like VGA outputs or HDMI or a different type of display output on the back of the system or things like serial or more just different types of I.O. that they don't include. 
So then instead of having to include all the different possible types of IO on the back of the system, you get to pick which of these two additional slots you want for about $10 each. The overall layout of the inside of the system is very similar 10 years later, but there's a few minor changes. Overall, the power supply is at the bottom, the PCIe is slots are a little bit above the power supply, and then above that there's the CPU cooler near the back, which has a little blower style fan that sucks air in from around the case and blows it out the back of the system. And then near the front is the hard drive bay, CD drive, and that comes in a little caddy that can be pulled out so you can access the memory slots underneath. But even though the overall layout is very similar, the way that each of these components is done has changed a little bit. First of all, taking a look at the CPU cooler, it's changed a good amount in the newer model. Because on these older systems, the CPU was much closer to the front of the system than on the newer ones. The newer ones have like a little flower type heat sink, essentially like an Intel stock cooler. But instead of having a little axial fan that blows down on it, there's a blower fan that sucks air through it and blows it out the back of the system. The older systems have a copper heat pipe solution with a lot of different aluminum fins and the copper heat pipes connects it to the CPU cooler that's a little bit forward in the system. Both of these styles of CPU coolers are more than plenty for the included CPUs in these systems at normal ambient workloads with over a 10 degree Celsius extra headroom on these systems. So the 65 watt TDP CPU, it's gonna be power limited or limited by the actual chip before you're thermal limited. And also in both situations, the systems are quite quiet during no almost all normal loads. So I don't really see a huge issue with either the cooler setups but the newer solution, because it isn't using heat pipes or any copper, is likely much cheaper for Dell to make. The way that the CD and hard drive bays have been laid out has also changed quite a bit in the last 10 years. On these older models, the first thing you see is the CD DVD drive. In this case, I actually have a little adapter to put a two and a half inch SSD or hard drive in instead. On the newer systems, the hard drive is the very first thing you see. Another nice thing with the new systems is even if you order them without a hard drive, they still come with all the cables and the tray you need. So you can just add a hard drive with no tools and just plug it in. You don't have to find those cables and the tray somewhere else online to be able to use the system with a hard drive later on. The rest of the tray can then be removed using this little selector at the bottom that unlocks the rest of the cage. One big difference on the new ones though is you actually have to take off this front plastic bezel to be able to take that off and access the memory underneath which is just another step and moving a few more little clips to access it, which I find is kind of annoying, especially seeing that these older ones, you didn't have to do that and that makes the memory easier to access. The Optiplex 5090 system I have also has four memory slots where this older 3010 only has two, but that's likely because this is a lower end 3000 series system where the newer 3080 also has two memory slots instead of the four, which the 5090 has. Taking a look at the board design now that the hard drive and CD drive cage is out, is you can tell that the motherboard actually has the front IO on the new systems. So the motherboard goes all the way from the very front of the system with the front IO to the very back of the system with the back IO. Whereas on these older systems, the front IO is connected via a cable to the motherboard. I'm guessing it's cheaper to have a slightly bigger motherboard and have to save the money on a cable and a connector and the extra manufacturing steps to make that happen. The disadvantage is you pretty much can't reuse the board if you set it up that way because now it's a fully proprietary form factor as it only works in this specific case. That also exposes all the power components. The power supply is pretty much the same form factor in the new systems compared to the old ones, but the connectors are fully different. These older systems had a traditional ATX power supply with a 24 pin main power connector and a four pin power connector going to the CPU power. Whereas the new ones have two four pins that go to the CPU power with a, and then the main CPU power seems to be about 10 pins. Another thing I noticed in the system is this old one has a little 80 millimeter fan that sucks air in from the front of the case into the, just the overall inside of the system. It never seems to spin very quickly, but it just kind of moves a little bit of air through the system. The new ones don't have that fan. I'm not sure if it was optional, but all these old ones I've seen seem to have it and the new ones don't. Since neither of the systems have a cooling problem, it doesn't seem to be an issue, but it might be an issue if you want to upgrade it by adding a graphics card, which Dell also seemed to gimp in the newer versions because they moved the big PCIe X16 slot, which you'd want to use with a graphics card, to the bottom of the two slots instead of the top one. I can't think of why they'd do that, because if I wanted to put a graphics card in a system like this, 
if I had a single slot GPU, having it on the top slot gives me another slot worth of extra ventilation and just cooling room. And if I wanted to put a dual slot low profile card, like an NVIDIA Quadro A2000, I could do it in these old systems, but I couldn't do it in the new systems. Looking at the motherboard itself, the layout has stayed roughly the same within the latest 10 years, likely because the system architecture Intel is using has stayed roughly the same as well. The CPU does almost everything where it connects directly to PCI Express and directly to the memory. The chipset does a little bit, they did move it around, whereas on these older 3010s it was under the main CPU heatsink and fan, whereas in the newer systems it's kind of near the PCIe slots where a lot of other modern motherboards do it. In the older systems, there's actually no heatsink at all on the chipset, but on the new ones, there's a little piece of aluminum. They're in both cases, though, they're very low power chipsets. And pretty much everything else just communicates to one of those two chips. There's not many other big processors or chips on these boards. They did add a few new features, though, on the boards. So things like M.2 support. There was built-in support for a Wi-Fi card on the new system, whereas this one didn't have support to easily add a Wi-Fi card on the system, so that is nice to have Wi-Fi support. And a dual M.2 slots on the new systems is pretty nice to have. And in both of these systems, Dell has put a lot of proprietary little connectors on for things like front uh, panel I.O. connections and other things. While these proprietary connectors give Dell a few more features, like the power button in these systems can actually be multiple colors, unlike a standard system, it does make it a lot more of a pain if you wanted to change anything out. And overall, that gets to my main point. These systems have continued to get more and more proprietary over the years, it appears. And they've also tried to save costs in things like painting the back black and other little things like that. Which in one way to see it is kind of optimizing the device to be cheaper when you don't need it. Because even though the old one had a more expensive cooler, the new one has likely a cheaper cooler but cools just as well. It doesn't need that additional fan. And they found other ways to save costs and give the same quality of product. And overall for IT people, the new systems are likely better. The hard drive is easier to swap, which is one of the most likely things that IT people are going to be doing. Built-in Wi-Fi is just a nice feature to have on a system like this. The ability to have more different I.O. at the back, so you can have things like serial VGA built into the new systems, or run another display on it is really nice. The better connectivity over the years has been nice to see. And I think overall, as an IT person, it's a nicer system to have. The problem is, as an enthusiast and someone who likes to tweak with these once they're done as their IT role, it's a worse system. It's more proprietary and there's less things you can do in 10 years with these newer systems when they become super cheap like these old ones are today. So let me know what type of changes you've seen in the last 10 or so years on other types of business desktops and computer systems and what you think about those changes.